G'day, how you doing? Adam Williams here from easywayphotography.com.au and of course, Adam Williams Creative YouTube channel where we are right now. I was gonna ask you to subscribe and like, but I haven't even given you anything yet. So, well, if you would like to, that would be fantastic. But at the end of this video, if you like what you see, be sure to hit that subscribe button for more fairly regular videos. All right, well, Photoshop's been doing some incredible things. It's just launched the 21 update and there are some absolutely incredible features in there. The one we're going to have a look at today, just a quick look at the sky replacement feature technology tool that they've now included in Photoshop. I've had a 30 second play already, but now we're going to get in there. I've got four or five images ready to go and we're really going to test it out, throw the kitchen sink at it and see what this new tool can do. Let's jump into Photoshop and take a look. All right, here we go. All right, so what you're going to need to do is you can either do this sky replacement directly on the background layer or if, for example, you had a bunch of different adjustment layers already in place, we probably don't want the black and white one there, to be honest, already in place, you will need to merge those layers up. Now, on a PC, that is hold down Alt, Control, Shift, and press E for everything. And on a Mac, that is hold down Option, Command, Shift, and press E for everything. And you'll get this merged layer. That will allow you, that will give Photoshop something to work with. All right, as I said, you can work directly on the background layer also with this technique. Now to replace the sky in Photoshop version 21, come up to the edit menu and sky replacement about halfway down. All right, now, for those of you that might already have my courses over at easywayphotography.com.au, in the coming weeks, I'm going to add some in-depth video tutorials to the Photoshop workflow courses the Essentials, the Intermediate and the Advanced courses. That will cover all the new features within Photoshop, including covering this new sky replacement feature in much more detail. But for now, we're just going to have a little play around and see what this thing can do. Now, up the top here, we have a bunch of... Pho Photoshop has preloaded a bunch of skies for us to have a play with. Now, I think if we click on this little cog, I'll do some more research on this and add it into the courses at Easy Way Photography, but you can import your own skies, okay, or maybe even your own sky folders. So all your best skies, best storms, best sunrises, sunsets, most dramatic light, etc, etc, bring them in here and you'll be able to use your very own photos rather than these photos that everyone's going to be using on, you know, Instagram and Facebook because Photoshop has given everyone these skies. But for the purpose of the demonstration, this is fine. Now, you can see we've got some nice fluffy blue skies and look at this, it just replaces it. I don't have to do anything. Okay, absolutely. There are some, there are some uh, sliders and controls that we can use. Spectacular, look at this. We can drop in a beautiful rainbow, a blazing colorful sunset, absolutely incredible. This one here, got a little bit of landmass in the background too, but it looks pretty natural. It does a pretty great job. Let's run with that one. We just click the menu, close that down, have a play with these. I'll go into detail exactly what they do within the courses, but basically they shift the edge and, and mess about with the mask a little bit. This one is fairly obvious, sky adjustments, adjust the brightness of the sky. Do we want it a little brighter, a little darker, something like that. This adjusts the temperature of the sky. Really, really orange, rather blue and pink. All right, or somewhere in the middle where we had it, scale makes the sky much, much bigger, and you can also click and drag the sky around, okay? And use that scale there, perfect. You can also flip the sky from left to right, excellent. And then you also have, you can change the lighting mode to screen. For the most part, it seems like multiply works best, and lighting adjustment will adjust the brightness of your foreground. A little bit darker on the foreground there, a little bit brighter on the foreground, depends what you think works best for each image. There won't be any set sort of, uh, I suppose, formula to these. It'll just be all image dependent. Color adjustment will adjust the foreground. It just makes it a little bit warmer um, to suit the color of the sky there. That's perfect. How good's that? And if we zoom in, you can 
see it's done a really incredible job of cutting and fitting that sky in without any artifacts. Click OK and you do get a bunch, you get this new folder which has all the different adjustments as layers all set up so you can adjust the opacity, you can mask them in and out. Absolutely brilliant. Well, I think you might agree that was a relatively simple sky and we could have replaced that in much the same time frame doing it the old manual way. Maybe a little bit slower, but this is definitely much, much, um, much, much easier, less steps. It's great. It's great. As long as it works. Here's a more difficult sky with many, many trees and leaves on the horizon. Let's check it out. Edit menu, sky replace. We can go straight to the background layer here as I've done. Boom. Looks great. All right. All right, all right, all right. What about a rainbow? Just looks absolutely phenomenal. Look how the rainbow, it's used the different blend mode here. And it's actually looks like it's added a little bit of mist on the horizon, which looks so realistic. Stormy. It's much like the sky we already had, isn't it? Okay, I don't like the way it's used the screen blend mode there though. You can see depending on which sky you choose, Photoshop will make a decision between screen and multiply, but in this case I think multiply is going to suit that particular sky a little bit better, and then we would play around with those. What else have we got here? Oh, look at this beautiful stormy one. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. All right, so it handles that really, really well as well. All right, let's get more difficult. How is it going to go? That's about as difficult as it gets. Really high detail tree with lots of gaps between the sky and the leaves. Here we go. Edit. Sky replace. Brilliant. It uses the last. Okay. Um, what if we wanted just a fluffy sky like that? Yeah, it works. Yeah, it works. I would probably want to brighten the entire image up a little bit after replacing that sky, but it does a fantastic. What about the rainbow? Look at that sitting in behind the tree. Add some contrast to that. Once we get, once we drop that sky in, add a contrast. Boom. Pop that rainbow up a little bit more. Incredible. Yeah, I mean, isn't this just incredible? And of course, we have all those. We have all those adjustments we can play with here as well, as in light, lightening or darkening the, the foreground. Like so, we might brighten the sky a fraction. Yeah. Um, I like the bluey pinks where it is. Color adjustment. Absolutely incredible. And if we zoom in there, it's only a low res image, but you can see, whoop. And look, to be honest, the quality of these skies isn't fantastic. It's a bit noisy there. But you can drop your own skies in too. But it's done an absolutely incredible job filling in all those gaps around all of those leaves. Okay, one more. And this is the one you've been waiting for. Okay, this is a little trick. I should have mentioned at the start of the video that I had a little secret up my sleeve. What we're going to do is see if Photoshop can handle adding both sky and reflections in this new automated um, feature, this new automated tool. Now let's go back to the beginning here. And let's add a sky initially. Edit. Where are we? Sky replacement. Well, that one's pretty nice too, isn't it? I do quite like that. I do. That's probably my favourite sky, that one. But what else have we got? There's that one. Maybe that was the one I had in the example. We'll run with that one. We'll run with that. And you can see initially it looks like Photoshop is unable to replace the reflections. But we're going to trick it. We're going to try and trick it. Um, that looks pretty good. I just think I want to brighten the sky up a little bit. 
That looks even better. Okay, that looks fantastic. Click OK. Now, if I click up the top here, click on the top layer, that group there, and merge the layers up on a PC, Alt, Control, Shift, E. On a Mac, that will be Option, Command, Shift, E. Hold them all down and press E. Option, Command, Shift, and then press E. Now, what we can do, Command or Control, T, once we've merged up, and right click on the photo and flip vertical because we're going to trick Photoshop and give it the reflection as a sky. Okay, and if we now go File, oh, sorry, Edit, Sky Replacement, we've got the same sky there, and we just need to line that up. Oh, it's pretty well lined up. Now, depending on how low to the ground you were, would affect where this sort of sits. Okay, but we'll keep it fairly much the same. We might just scale that up a little bit. Well, I probably don't want to scale that up, to be honest. That looks pretty good. And we might just darken the sky a fraction because the reflection would generally be a bit darker than the sky. Click OK. And now, once again, click on the top layer and merge up again on a PC, hold down Alt, Control, Shift, and then press E. And again on a Mac, hold down Option, Command, Shift, and press E. Then Command or Control, T, and we'll flip it up the right way. We've managed to use this new incredible sky replacement feature and trick Photoshop into also automatically, if you like, or AI assisted, I'm not sure exactly how it's doing this, in replacing the reflections because we flipped it up and pretended that was our sky and Photoshop came along to the party and replaced the, the reflections as well. I think it looks incredible. I mean, probably the middle of the image requires a little bit of a pink tone. I mean, something like this, if we go solid color and choose like a pinkish tone. In fact, if I turn that layer off, double click on this little icon, I can choose one of the colors from the photo here. And then change the blend mode, turn that back on, change the blend mode to soft light. Invert that. B for brush. Not working for some reason. We'll turn that opacity down. And all we really need is a little bit, maybe a little bit. That's probably even a bit too much, to be honest. We might just lower the opacity. A little bit of that extra pink in the middle there. And we've got something really, really convincing. I love it. I absolutely love this feature. It is so simple, so easy. As I said, if you already have my Photoshop courses, the Ultimate Bundle Workflow courses, the Essential Beginner, the Accelerator Intermediate, and the Turbo Advanced courses, I'm going to drop in some in-depth video tutorials on not only the sky replacement, the new sky replacement feature that we touched on here, and how to bring in your own sky folders, but also there's a bunch of other really cool new features that Photoshop has included that haven't been within Photoshop before. They are brand new features, brand new filters, brand new tools that I will do some in-depth videos on as well. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks again for watching along. I look forward to seeing you next time. Oh, if you enjoyed it, I would love it if you could hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, leave a comment. Um, anyway, that would be great. Enjoy the rest of the day and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.